fighting in Sudan entering a fourth week. The sound of gunfire in the streets of the capital, Khartoum, even as peace negotiations between Commander Mohamed Hamdan Dagalo and Army Chief Abdel Fattah Burhan appear to be taking a positive turn during meetings in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. If this stage is successful, and I talked to our negotiators this morning who are cautiously optimistic, it would then enable expanded talks with additional local, regional, and international stakeholders towards a permanent cessation of hostilities and then a return to civilian-led rule as the Sudanese people have demanded for years. Burhan led a military coup in 2021, an upheaval lawmakers said the United States had failed to address. Instead of imposing sanctions, we put the democratic aspirations of millions of Sudanese in the hands of generals despite evidence of their complicity in and responsibility for gross violations of human rights and significant public corruption. Sudan was supposed to be undergoing a transition to democratic government. The conflict has upended that timing, and some Republican lawmakers say the Biden administration has still not developed a strategy. I call for the administration to articulate a clear vision for what it wants in Sudan. I'm still waiting. Last week, the White House authorized sanctions that can be targeted at anyone undermining Sudan's stability. And other lawmakers said the ongoing peace negotiations have a clear goal. We want to see a ceasefire. Um, we want to see a hold uh, to give time uh, to negotiations. The ultimate goal, of course, is to get Sudan back onto the path uh, toward a democracy where the people of Sudan uh, can have their say. More than a third of Sudan's population required humanitarian assistance before the conflict started according to the U.S. State Department. And now the situation is much worse. More than 700,000 people have been internally displaced and more than 170,000 people have crossed into neighboring countries, meaning that the ramifications of this conflict do not end at Sudan's borders. They stretch into the region, compounding existing humanitarian needs across several countries. State Department officials told lawmakers it has successfully evacuated 1,300 of the 5,000 Americans registered in Sudan, with the remaining choosing to stay on. Katherine Gibson, VOA News, Capitol Hill.